What's up Atlanta? My name is Nolan Huber Rhodes. I'm coming to you on behalf of The Main Line and today we are talking about Cop City, Joyce Shepard, City Council, and all of the activism that went into getting Joyce Shepard's ordinance suspended. On Monday, June 7th, the very same day that the City Council unanimously voted to increase the Atlanta Police Department budget by 6%, District 12 Councilwoman Joyce Shepard introduced an ordinance to allow Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms to issue a ground lease of 381 acres of land at the Old Atlanta Prison Farm to the Atlanta Police Foundation for $10 per year. Yes, $10 per year. Atlanta Police Foundation plans to use 150 acres of that land for the development of Cop City a massive training facility and mock city for the Atlanta Police Department to train in. This ordinance to build Cop City on the old Atlanta prison farm shows the direct white supremacist line connecting slavery to convict leasing to policing and the prison industrial complex at large, of which police foundations are a part of. It is an attack on black people, our planet, and humanity as a whole. This project is built at the intersection of the climate crisis and the prison industrial complex both of which harm poor people, working people, and black people at disproportionate rates. It is also being built on, again, stolen land. On Wednesday, June 16th, Atlanta City Council's finance executive community was set to hear the ordinance and vote on whether or not to send it through to committee. But that did not come without activists and organizers making some noise. People from all over the city called in to voice their opposition to destroying a forest in order to build Cop City. The public comment line was filled with three hours and 41 minutes worth of comments, most of which were in opposition to Cop City. One young person who identified herself as Candace Owens had this particularly hilarious and snarky comment to leave on the public comment line. Dear Councilwoman Shepherd, my name is Candace Owens and I live in District 12. I've been doing some research for a school report. You'll never guess what I learned. Trees get too much credit and cops are way better. I love cops. Like, a lot. For real. They suck carbon out of the air. They support biodiversity. They soak up the storm water and hold the soul together. There are even studies that show spending time in the police station promotes mental health. Did you know that you can identify a crown vic just by the sound of its siren? If you add it all up, cops are way better than forests and we should definitely cater to them. Plus, they are super vulnerable to a disease called the blue flu. I hope you will take my comments super seriously. They don't teach us sarcasm until the 7th grade. Sincerely, Candace. In addition to the 3 hours and 41 minutes of public comment, during the meeting, protesters showed up at Joyce Shepard's house, rang her doorbell, and chanted, No Cop City! Keep Atlanta green! while standing outside of her house. Shepard's response was, well, a bit heavy-handed. As a matter of fact, as of today, no later than tomorrow, I'll be putting a no trespassing sign in my property. And if they come back, I will give the police the right to actually lock them up. Shepard quickly had units of police cars parked outside her house for the rest of the afternoon. And in addition to Shepard's heavy-handed response about protesters not having the right to come on her property, fellow council member Natalyn Archibong said what happened to Shepard was appalling. But let's talk about that. What's more appalling? The fact that a few protesters rang a politician's doorbell and chanted about the environment? Or the fact that activists and organizers have been calling into city council meetings for over a year at this point to try and close the Atlanta City Detention Center, uh, to try to reallocate money from the police into services that actually keep our community safe, and not one of these demands has been met. Better yet, there's not even a way to tell if city council people even, ha even ha like have to listen to public comment. They're all online, they're not on camera, and they could literally go on about their day during the three hours and 41 minutes that people call in, and we would never know the difference. In fact, Joyce Shepard held her press conference during the public comment portion of the meeting, when most of the public comments were about her ordinance. So tell me what the community is supposed to do, other than show up at her house nonviolently, because it's obvious that she isn't listening to public comment, and she said it herself. She still supports the legislation, 
and will continue to support it no matter what. So I'm saying tonight that I'm still supporting the Academy. I'm not scared. However, there will be no right for people to come on my property and protest. The question is, whose interest is Joyce Shepard representing? When faced with the question about whether or not her campaign takes or will take money from executives on the Police Foundation, she quickly became a Police Foundation apologist. And I don't know who the board members are, to be honest with you, I don't have a list in front of me. So I don't know who they are, but if it's legal and people are supporting folks in terms of campaign, if I have that right, I can do that. But let me tell you about the Police Foundation also when people talk about the Police Foundation. As we sit here in this police precinct that just opened up about six months ago, that I did actually fight to have in this district's brand new police precinct, we just opened up last month a brand new state of the art at Promise Center built by the police, uh, found, the Atlanta Police Foundation on the other end of Metropolitan Parkway. This is the second foundation that, at Promise Center that has been built in the city of Atlanta. The first one is in Vine City, the second one is on Metropolitan Parkway, and the next one is getting ready to be built on Capitol Road through the Atlanta Police Foundation with the same group of people that you're talking about. What is that Promise Center and what do they do? They're taking our youth off the street that are actually majorly at risk. They're failing. That's why we call it the At Promise Center, not the At Risk Center. But we're trying to bring back, save our youth from the community. They've been doing this for years. So when we talk about the Atlanta Police Foundation, just know that this is one of many things they do. They bring cameras to our communities. They bring police things to our community equipment. They do a lot of fundraising for that. So when we talk about the Atlanta Police Foundation, let's make sure we put it in context of who they are and what they do. While Shepard may think the police foundations are necessary to save kids from their communities, even though she did clarify that she didn't mean save them from their communities, Shepard fails to ask herself why those kids are, in her words, at promise in the first place. Is it perhaps the inequalities in, in our system? Is it perhaps the racist inequities that exist especially in Atlanta? Is it perhaps held up and enforced by the police state in Atlanta? Furthermore, the Police Foundation is an undemocratic, dark money institution funded and directed by wealthy Atlantans and people not in Atlanta and C-suite executives who do not pay nearly enough in taxes and who receive a tax break when they donate money to the foundation while they use that money to protect their own power, to boost their profits, and to make our city into their image. Jamal Taylor, who is an organizer with Community Movement Builders in, in Joy Shepherd's district, District 12, perhaps put the irony of Shepherd's outrage at protesters in the best terms when he said this on Instagram. Joy Shepherd wants to complain about peaceful protesters showing up at her house, where she was presenting her ordinance to build Cop City. But it was her police force who was showing up at protesters' houses, including Rayshar Brooks's sister, making false accusations when she should be able to, to be home, safe, and able to grieve in peace in order to intimidate us. It was her police department who was, last year, surveilling us and showing up to our planning meetings on private property to take pics of our license plate numbers for intimidation. It was her police department shooting us with rubber bullets and tear gas. It's her police department who, just a couple months ago, showed up to our community house and garden and garden day to surveil us, while families with small children were simply learning how to grow food. Those protesters who showed up at her house were unarmed and peaceful. She says she was scared. Imagine how we feel when armed police officers from Zone 3, Joy Shepard's Zone, with an actual track record of killing unarmed black people, show up at our planning sessions, houses, and community events uninvited, with Blue Lives Matter flags on, acting hella aggressive with the sole purpose of surveillance and intimidation. When we talk about the murderous system of policing, that system includes council people like Joyce Shepard. And perhaps the most important part of this story is the fact that Joyce Shepard and council people like Joyce Shepard did not win today. After the public comments, the protests, the press conference, and, and the finance committee meeting, the committee unanimously voted to hold this ordinance for 60 days. And no matter how much Shepard and crew want to villainize people exercising their rights, direct action works. People power works. Keep going. Our people and our planet depend on it.
As always, if you want to support the main line and our coverage, please go to patreon.com backslash mainline zine and become a subscriber. I highly recommend, highly recommend uh, the $13.12 uh, per month. If you know, you know.